Good morning, St. John Lutheran Church. Welcome to online worship for Sunday, March 28th, Palm Sunday. It's a joy to gather with you this morning. Bulletins for this worship service are available on the congregation's website, stjohnash.org. I invite you to follow along with the service, to sing along with the hymns, pray along with the prayers, and be nourished by God's word of life for you. Our gathering begins with our call to worship. We come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. We will journey through praise with joy on our lips. We will travel through betrayal and death, cradling hope deep in our hearts. Jesus leads us through this week and we will follow for he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us. We wave palm branches in anticipation. We lay our love before him to cushion his walk. Setting aside all power, glory, and might, he comes, modeling humility and obedience for all of us. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God. We join together in our gathering hymn, all glory, laud, and honor. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join together in our Kyrie.
Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in reading Psalm 24 responsively. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and who do not swear deceitfully, they will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The Holy Gospel comes to us this morning from St. Mark, the 11th chapter. When Jesus and his disciples were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and he went into the temple. When he looked around at everything, it was already late. He went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hey, everybody. It is a joy to get to spend a little bit of time with you as we gather for worship, as we gather to hear God's words of love for us that come to us in the Bible. Today, we hear a story of Jesus almost at the end of his life, about a week or so before he died on the cross for us. He comes into Jerusalem. It's a huge city. It's where the temple was. It was where the seat of the government was. And he comes in, and there's so many people there to greet him. And they use this word that we don't really use anymore. They say, Hosanna. It sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Hosanna. That sounds like something you'd shout when, when things are going well, right? Well, it turns out Hosanna actually means save now. These are cries from people who expect Jesus to come into their lives and to do amazing things for them. And as we continue to read the story, as we will hear in the story later this week when we gather for worship on Thursday and Friday, the way that Jesus saves us is by dying on a cross and by being raised again. My guess is that's not really how people expected Jesus to save them. My guess, too, is there's a lot of people in our world that still, deep in their hearts, are hurting and are crying out for someone, anyone, to save now. I think those are prayers that all of us have at some time that we share with Jesus, 
Jesus, save now. Come and take care of us in our struggles, in our sufferings. And Jesus promises to do that. And one of the ways that Jesus saves us right here and right now is by giving those who need him us. You, yes, you, are one of the many ways that Jesus takes care of people who are in need. God has given you unique gifts to take care of other people, to reveal the love and the life of Jesus. And God is putting people in your life too to take care of you when you need help. And through all of that, we see the love of Jesus. And we know that he is our savior and that he saves us now. Hosanna, Jesus. Let's say a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for not only coming into Jerusalem so long ago, but for coming into our lives. Thank you for saving us even today, for taking care of us in the struggles that we always face. Thank you for loving us and for giving us your life. Help us to be part of your saving power for our neighbors in need. In your name we pray, amen. I pray you have a blessed week and I look forward to visiting with you again next Sunday on Easter. Wow. Have a blessed week, everybody. Grace, mercy, and peace to you this morning from our triune God, from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, it's always been one of my favorite times in the life of the church. For me, it's always brought with it the arrival of spring. Well, almost always. Sometimes we get snow. But when I was growing up in East Texas, sometimes it was even nice enough to be able to start off worship outside, which a hyper kid like myself kind of enjoyed. Palm Sunday. It's the day that begins our journey to the cross and our journey to Easter. It's a time of excitement, and we get a sense of that in our reading today. There is a lot of activity here. Jesus and his disciples are making their way to Jerusalem for this final act of the story. They've been on a a long trip. They're almost to where they need to be, and then we get get the bit with the, the cult. We get the bit with people putting their cloaks and these branches down on the road in front of them, welcoming Jesus into the city. Hosanna, save now. They're expecting something big from Jesus. They're expecting salvation. They are expecting him to live into his identity as an ancestor of their ancient King David. They've been waiting for this for a thousand years. The last 300 or so have been under the rule of the Romans and the Greeks. They've been waiting. And now the time has come for Jesus to save now. Hosanna, Jesus. If if we were to take a minute, to look at other stories of triumphal entries into the city from other ancient Middle Eastern stories, we would see that what Jesus is doing here fits a pattern. A leader, whether a king or a military leader, is going to ride into the city with shouts of excitement, with the city welcoming him colt for a king, a war horse for a general. There's a sense that something is going to happen, something big. And the leader 
does something to show them that, yes, this is really happening. So we get to our reading today. Jesus entered Jerusalem. He went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything, well, it was already late. So he went out to Bethany with the twelve. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We get a whole bustle of activity and joy and celebration. And when Jesus gets into Jerusalem, he looks around and leaves. It's a little bit disappointing, isn't it? It's a little disappointing that he didn't follow up this triumphal entry with some grandiose sign or miracle or at least a speech to say what's going to come. He just looks around and leaves. Those of us who know this story know that he comes back. We know that he will come again into the temple Overturning tables, overturning the system of sacrifice, overturning the systems of commercial abuse that take place in his temple. They know that he will come again into Jerusalem as a marked man. We know that he will come again into Jerusalem as a man that the chief priests seek to kill. We know that he will come into Jerusalem again and be arrested We know that he will leave Jerusalem again to be nailed to a cross outside the city walls to die as a common criminal. And the whole thing can seem more than just a bit disappointing. For people who waited centuries for a new king to come, the story that we hear today and the story that we are going to hear in the days ahead just does not measure up to so many of our notions of who a king and who a savior should be. Jesus. Jesus doesn't come in as a military leader. He doesn't come in looking for a throne. He comes with a singular purpose. To show his love at its fullest. To give you his very life. When we understand, when we even understand just a slight little bit what it is that Jesus has come into this world to do, what Jesus is coming into Jerusalem to do, maybe there's still a tinge of disappointment there, that there couldn't be some other way. But when we see him hanging on the cross, I hope we understand the fullness of his love for us. I hope that we get a sense of the suffering that God has experienced for us throughout history the suffering that God has done for humanity, the struggle that God has dealt with of loving people like you and me whose lives just don't reflect that love back. So Jesus goes to a cross for us to make right what we can't, to show love at its fullest, Our story today, it's kind of disappointing. It's kind of disappointing that Jesus just goes in and looks around and leaves. We will experience disappointment again this week. One of Jesus' friends will betray him, just as we so often do. Most of his friends won't be there to see him dying on a cross. 
they've run away, they've deserted him. It's disappointing to see disciples treating their, their rabbi that way. There will be disappointment on Sunday too when women go seeking a body and he's not there. So, as disappointing as today is, know that there is good news to follow, good news for you in the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So in the days ahead, let's walk with him. Let's follow through all of the disappointment. Let's follow to a new abundant life that we just can't imagine. A new abundant life that can only come through great suffering. Thanks be to God. Let's join in our hymn of the day. Will you come and follow me? Together with the whole church, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Even though in this gathering we are unable to receive an offering as we worship together, I do want to say thank you for all of the ways that you support the ministry of St. John Lutheran Church. Thank you for your time and your energy, for your prayers, and for your financial gifts that allow us to engage in our mission of sharing the bread of life. 
If you would like to give a financial gift to the congregation, there are a couple of ways you can do that. You can do so electronically on the congregation's website. Simply click on the Give button in the upper right-hand corner of the homepage. Then select Give using Tithely. Using Tithely, you can make a one-time gift or set up recurring gifts. Thank you. If you'd like to give a gift of cash or check, you can get that to the church office during business hours, Monday through Thursday, 9 to 2, or by mailing it. The address is 2700 Babcock Road, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54313. Again, thank you for all of your support. Let's say a word of prayer for the gifts that we receive. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us be bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As our time of worship comes to a close, we hold in prayer the members of St. John who are celebrating in the days ahead. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks that you have come into this world to save us that you save us right here and right now, that you pour out on us the goodness of all your gifts, that you reveal in so many ways your love and your life. Today, we pray for, sis, for Sarah, for Nancy, for Dick, Bridget, Rhea, Jessica, and Eric. We give you thanks for the blessings that you have poured out on them in their lives. We pray that you would continue to reveal your grace and your love, that they would be agents of your salvation to their families, your church, their community, and to all of creation. It's in your holy and beautiful name we pray, Jesus. Amen. And now we lay down our palm branches and with them we lay down our belief that there is another way for you to be God. As the last echo of the final Alleluia fades, so does our hope that this journey can end in any other way. The week stretches ahead, glory less and painful. Whether we walk with faith, with all faith or none, we look towards the cross, knowing it is both the most human and the most divine of all journeys. Travel the road with courage, with love, and with the uneasy peace that is the gift of faith into this holiest of weeks. Amen. We join in our sending song, Go to Dark Gethsemane.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.